Greetings again. Glad we get to be together for another Devo today. Welcome if you're just joining us and for the rest of you, glad we're on the trail together. This is awesome. Um, I, I was kind of thinking as I pray through these different Devo topics, you know, that we're just kind of pulling out through uh, the Bible. We're in the New Testament now, we're in Matthew. And as we're going through, I, I was thinking about this in, in uh, chapter four, beginning in the first verse. You know, how important it is to, to know that we go through difficulties and Jesus showed us um, a way to work through the testings and trials that we experience. And I think he gives us some great insights. Then Jesus, in verse 1 of chapter 4, says, was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Now, this is important before we go too much further. The word testing and tempted, test or tempting, is, is uh, the same Greek word. So it, it depends upon what's going on in the event, does it become, Satan always wants to twist a testing where God's testing, uh, in, in, in metal, for example, they, they use a thing called tensile strength. And so they will pull a piece of metal apart and apart and apart and apart, and right before it snaps, that's its tensile strength. That's how much pressure it can withstand before it snaps. So God's not trying to prove out um, your tensile strength in testing. He's trying to prove to you how strong he is in your life and that you can rely on him. That's the idea. But Satan uses that testing and turns it into temptation to try and get you to snap his way and to fall prey to doing something uh, that would be uh, unhealthy for you. Therefore, it becomes a temptation. Hopefully, that makes a little bit of sense in the way this works. And when he had Fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Afterward, he was hungry. Okay, that may, Jesus was both fully God and fully man, 100%. So he, the thing is, is he felt human need and human hunger. He felt that. He, he, he was, so he was hungry. And now when the tempter, sa Satan, came to him, he said, if you, but it's interesting, our translation in, I'm using the New King James Version, that's not really a, a real good, accurate thing. It really means since you are, not if it's, it, it reads a little different in our translation, but it really, in original language, is since you are the Son of God, command these stones uh, become bread. But he answered and said, notice this, it is written, and he goes back to the written word of God, and he says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. This is the first one, and this is the temptation of the flesh, the desires of the flesh, right? And then he goes on and says in verse 5, Then the devil took him up to the holy uh, city, up to set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, Since you are, or if you are, the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written. Now he, Satan, is using... Jesus approach and he's 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 trying to be tricky and he's a deceiver and he says you know oh yeah so it's in, this is what the Bible says you know so he says he shall uh, give his angels charge over and over you and in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone and Jesus said to him again he says it is written again you shall not tempt the Lord your God and so interesting he goes back and says yeah but there's that was a that was a a misstated uh, quote. Uh, he was twisting or perverting the word of God, and Satan does that. And so he say, no, th there's something that supersedes that, and it says, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And again, the devil took him up an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the earth. So that last one was kind of that that idea of the pride of life. Hey. Look out over all of this. He, he, he says, look out over this. You can throw yourself down. In other words, you don't have to go to the cross to prove that you're the son of God. Just, you know, jump off here and, and the angels will bear you up and you don't, that way you don't have to go through the suffering. Ah, that's, Jesus said, no, no that's, not, that's not how it's going to work. He takes him to an exceedingly high mountain and shows him uh, the, the kingdoms of the, the world and their glory and said to him, all these things I, I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus said, I'm away from you who say, Satan with you, Satan, for it is written, again, he goes back to the word, it is written, uh, you shall worship the Lord your God, uh, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, or fled away, without victory, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. So this next one we see that we just read is kind of that, um, uh, uh, I, I would say, um, kind of this, again, the desire uh, of, of, 
our, of our lives, you know, just we, we fall prey to these three things, like this, the same thing, that desire in our flesh, the, the lust of the eye, look at all there is, you know, the pride of life. You know, it's interesting if you go back into the garden, this is Satan's M.O., this is how he works. Those three things you see throughout the scripture and nothing changed. It's his MO. It works. It works against uh, us. And you need to be aware with it. But how did Jesus show us in the form of man under the power and authority of the Holy Spirit? What did he go back to? He stood on the word of God. That's for you today and for me today and for the rest of our lives to think about and to know that, man, I want to stand on God's word and trust him. What he said is what he's going to do. And he is for you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is of this world. God bless you. Have a great day. Stand on his word.